Good evening and welcome to uh, the second installment of Miss Mage. And actually, this is part one uh, of two parts of this interview that I did with my old high school teacher, Miss Machen. Now, I wanted to interview her. I'll just reiterate, I think, what I said in the other video. She was my high school teacher, but I wanted to interview her because she was one of the teachers that I remembered quite well. And I think that a lot of you uh, watching this now remember her quite well. Um, she's that type of high school teacher that you don't forget. You know, she was very... <laughs> She had a lot of personality in class, you know, but we learned a lot at the same time. Um, so it was nice to catch up with her and see what happened to Miss Machen. And it just so happened that what I didn't know about Miss Machen or Pat Machen, Patricia Machen, is that uh, she was a local girl. She grew up in the area where she taught for 30 some odd years. Uh, of course, the, the high school wasn't there at the time that she uh, became of high school age. So she had to go to Montreal West High School. Um, she missed it just by a year or else she would have graduated from John Murray High School. I didn't know that she was so integrated into the community and that her parents were um, as, I guess, pr as prestigious as they were in the community. Uh, I'm, I'm talking specifically in Valois, which is... Uh, a district of Point Claire in the West Island. So in, in this one, this one's a little longer. However, uh, when I reviewed it just now again, I realized that it's chock full of just fantastic stories. I mean, we go from mentioning uh, Douglas Shan, which if you're a West Islander, you know that street. But so she talks, she mentions him. Uh, she mentions Victor Rose, not the coffee place, but the guy who was the priest of the other United Church over in Point Claire. Uh, she mentions Carnegie Hall. She's connected to Carnegie Hall. Uh, Jack Layton, not Jack Layton, but Jack Layton's dad. So she mentions him. And of course, uh, we went a little bit into polio and what happened in this area when uh, polio uh, came around. And of course that affected the, um, the swimming in the lake. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the second installment. This is my interview with Miss Machen. This is part one. This is her story growing up in Vawa Point Claire here in the West Island of the island of Montreal. Enjoy. My name is Pat Machen, Patricia Machen officially. Can't spell it, but there it is. And uh, I, I came as a, a one-year-old to Valwa. At one point, somebody asked me where I got my self-esteem. And uh, first of all, I didn't know I had to say, I said, okay, what's my self-esteem? Because, you know, you don't, I don't know, I just live. Somebody else said to me once, you live so in the present, and I do. You know, I am in the present, I don't. But, but uh, my dad, uh, gave me self-esteem because I believed in what he was doing, or not as a minister, but as a person. My father was the United Church minister at Valwa United for 30 years. Uh, religion aside, everyone went to church anyways as a, as a social uh, community thing. Oh, yes. Right? Oh, yeah. And then so plus religion in there. So he had uh, a big role as being an authority of, of what, of, of of well, he had very. Or, or how, how would you? Well, I wouldn't. Uh, it's. I would call him a very religious man, but I don't think. Re I, and religion was his. His. He loved his, his doing. Oh, and he was. <laughs> he loved performance. He loved his Sunday morning services. I mean, he loved a good service that worked. He <laughs> loved baptisms. Well, your your <laughs> father. So your father was there from forty to seventy. Yeah, long time. Very long time. And um, again, it was an era where a lot of things were happening. And, and this is sort of, uh, again, why I'm, I, I, I can't run out of things to talk about with no, this no. era. Yeah. Because there was such huge change in this yes. area. Yes. It, it, things were doubling in size every five years, it seemed as though. Uh, population and growth and, and the amount of streets and schools and, and churches and everything. So, uh, so because of that and because of he was who he was, 
he was almost at every single opening of every single thing that I think he was at, of course, every church opening. He was at the uh, uh, St. John, uh, Vawa Park Elementary yeah, uh, opening. Yeah. I think but, he was at the, the shops opening, too. Oh, he could have easily <laughs> been. Uh, but the other thing about him, because he loved, he loved ritual, but he also was very much involved with individuals because at that time there were very, like illness and and depression he had depression he suffered from depression and so he was two people he loved the ritual but he also very involved with individuals my father was the probably second minister third minister not not many in of the church because they lasted a while in those days, eh? Well, no, he was rather unusual that he didn't move. The church changed and the community changed. Most ministers moved around, although a lot of the, no, a lot of the West Island buddies that he had all stayed, and they all stayed. Victor Rose was one, the Victor Rose Cafe. Is, oh, yes. 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 And uh, there was one, out, they were there, no, they were buddies. They did stay longer than now, most, most, uh, most ministers move around. So he got a. So he was already a minister somewhere, and then he was trapped. First charge was in uh, Valcarce, which not in the on the army base, but in the community. And again, uh, that he married my mother, and uh, they went there, and it was a wood stove, and she had to wear big boots. My mother had been brought up in Victoria, B.C., in a girls' private school and she played the violin. She did not do well in big boots, but she did. And then, so they were there probably a year or so, and then moved to Valwa. Did you ever ask your dad or your mom about uh, what, moving to Valwa? Was it was it like uh, going to the country? Was it? Oh was no, it, I mean, it was, was coming that, back like, to, to home. Uh, like they lived, they, my father grad, my father was um, recruited by the United Church of Canada because they had no ministers. My father was a, he left school at the age of 15. Eh? It was during the war and, and he and had a huge family and was, a, I think, a, an accountant or something in Bristol. And, uh, and the United Church came over and said, we'll give you an education and a job. And he was very involved with his when church. When you say war, you mean the first one? And it, uh, end, uh, end of the first one. So he was recruited, he came over here, studied at McGill. No, you know, he, he was, it was a fast course. <laughs> and in the summers he was sent off to minister in Newfoundland in the outports. You're talking about a, a Brit from Bristol. He loved it. There was a lot of, I mean, it was a very tight community. Yes. And so your dad having the role that he had, was it difficult for him to kind of develop a kinship or an, uh, just a friendship with some of the other guys in the town? Or how, how was that? Well, that would be difficult because he did, he was, he knew things. Like he, he was a counselor, whatever, there were, you know. He, he was a counselor? Well, he would be because at that time there were no psychologists. Oh, a counselor. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, like I mean, he knew man. people's okay. homes, yes. families. He knew their... Yeah, well, at that time, it was... Yeah, he was, yes, he yes. He was, role. Yes, yes. And, and he was in charge of their salvation. Th well, he <laughs> that's not something that he went into. I don't... My father was very modern in his thinking. He had a very loving God. He did not have a, a vengeful God in his thinking. And so, therefore, it okay. wouldn't be a, you know, if you don't do this, you go to hell. Not sure he even considered hell as a possibility. I don't think he thought that was a god, godlike thing. Maybe, which probably got him into trouble with certain people. I guess yeah. I don't know. You know, yeah. uh, fundamentalists. But um, uh, so it was much more of a, of a loving or a care, or a forgiving uh, mm -hmm. God that he had. So he wasn't that. He, that was his. Right. That was much more his focus. Uh, so your connection with Douglas Shan, he would have been friends with Douglas Shan? Oh, yes. Yeah. You see, he did. He had friends. Yes, he would have had friends, but there would always, well, all the men at that time had a certain distance. I don't know whether men today have less distance, but at that time there would be distance. Explain to me what you mean by the distance. Well, they were fathers. They were, they had, they ran the family. They, they did not cry. In public. In public. In the bathroom. Yeah. 
<laughs> they did not show anger. I mean, they would not. My father never, uh, well, only once I remember him being frustrated and, and letting loose, you know. But, I mean, he was angry at times. He was frustrated at times, but he certainly didn't show it. So uh, they were, they were, they had to bear the responsibility of family, home, church, community. They were citizens. I think, you know. Yes, I, I I think that probably he and Douglas Shan, there was a sense of humor also involved with my father, which he had trouble with, with some people, you know, because he had to behave. But... Uh, was there anybody that he could he let had, loose with? If, yes, later on there was a, a another minister that I after think... After he retired? Or? Nearly after he retired. He retired to McElwain, Eric McElwain in Beaconsfield. I think they were very close. And I think my father could speak with him. But that was after he retired, so yeah. he was no longer. I think he, yes, I think, what is the name of the Gordon Robertson, who's, uh, the, the building has been named after, eh, at uh, Beaconsfield. Mm -hmm. He was an elder in the church. And if people like that, Dad could talk to. He would talk with them, but not about his emotions or about what I just I couldn't imagine uh, yeah. going through... Uh, uh, that many uh, counselorships, yes. that many uh, weddings and baptisms and just knowing people yes. that much yes. and holding it all in and not being able to... Yeah, he did. You know what he I mean? Did. Yeah. Not being able to tell did. anybody or, or no. just to have to hold all that in? Yes. To no. not have to go to someone and say, man, these two are nuts. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> or just something like... Or was he not like that? Or would he not have thought... He that? would have thought that, but he would <laughs> never have, uh, never have expressed it. So with all of that, and we didn't even get into uh, how prestigious of a, of, a, of a musician your mother was because I went to research your dad. I ended up finding more on your mom yes. than your dad. Yes. Your dad was mostly um, officiated by, officiated by, officiated by, but your mom was, was she in the Montreal, Symph Montreal Women's Symphony, Symphony Orchestra? Symphony yeah, uh, the Concordia Trio? No. Yeah, she was in a, a she a did a trio? performance oh, called okay. the Concordia Trio. <laughs> and there was one other one. What's the other one? There was one other one. She was in the Concordia Trio. Oh, she yes, okay. Mary Machen. Oh, Constant Pathé. Oh, yes. Okay. Fra oh, yes. I I turn pages. Frances Botner, tiny woman, pianist through and through. She's playing away. I'm watching carefully because it's very nerve-wracking turning pages. <laughs> <laughs> so you read music? I, yes. So, so you, you, you were doing this at, at a young age? Oh, yeah. I, uh, yes, we had a lovely piano teacher in Valois. My mother always played. My mother was, but, but, so she said, and the piano teacher in Valois was very sweet, and we, and, and we had a lot of cookies and milk, and I learned to play the first movement of the, uh, the uh, Moonlight Sonata very well. With a, with a pedal on, and then my with mother's pedal on. <laughs> with my mother came back. My the, mother's the muted pedal. Yes, <laughs> yeah, or the sustained hum, pedal. Sustained. Yeah. <laughs> it's very lovely that yeah, way. I yeah. still can. You know, yeah. But the thing is that, and then uh, uh, my mother's best friend, deadly pianist, came back to town, and I was put with her. And uh, so I went, uh, I, at the age of 12, I realized there was more than the Moonlight Sonata, <laughs> which was sort of <laughs> shocking to me. So your, was your mother professional when your father met her? She never was professional. She never, she this ended- This is not professional. No, no, she, she, she did the Woman's Symphony and then realized that uh, she loved chamber music, which is playing with two or three people. Yeah. And so therefore she just, uh, to this day, I meet people that she had created. She had created a trio. It didn't matter if you could play. She had been playing since the age of seven herself. She knew all the repertoire, and she just walked. She didn't. She didn't blink when we got the giggles or so I'll fell tell apart. You <laughs> what's interesting about <clears throat> learning about your mother now is uh, so we can get into this a little later. But you were my teacher. Yes. Uh, 95, 96, which is your second to last year, I believe? I, yes, I, I, I graduated in 97. You graduated in 97. <laughs> and so um, uh, you spoke of your mother 
almost daily. Yes. There was always a story yes. of something that happened with your mother, or yes. she said something. We or were did something. such opposites. And you lived together, right? No, no, no. Oh, you didn't live together? Oh, I would have killed her or she killed me. <laughs> One of us would have. No, no, no. Maybe when you. Oh, it might have been when you were there, she was living with me, and that might have. Because. Her, Maybe that's why there's so many stories. Yes, because her building. We were your therapy. <laughs> yes, yes, probably because <laughs> yes, because her building in Dorval. There was a huge fire on the in her apartment building on the Lakeshore Road in Dorval, and uh, she got out with her cat and her violin. <laughs> <laughs> People thought that she had her important papers in this. No, she had her violin in this. <laughs> and uh, so, yes, she came to live with me until they repaired the place, which took quite a while. And so that's that why we never lived together. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. Yes, but I mean, and we, yeah, we, she was a pretty alive person and she volunteered it to Lindsay, eh? What years did she volunteer at Lindsay? Well, she or, would have been in her late well, 70s, 80s, so she, yeah. Uh, so the 80s, I guess. Uh, yeah, nineties, more nineties. George Doxus. Doxus. She was, was with there. Doxus, and she she worked with the, uh, okay. the violinist. So here I have some quotes from your mother. Oh dear. <laughs> this is from ninety one. Okay. Uh, she said, "There's always a new challenge here," said Mary Machen, known as Miss Mary, to the music students. I want to share my knowledge, but I'm also learning a lot from the students. Your mother was progressive. Very. She ended up at one point teaching out in Kanawaki. Oh, she yeah? had no credentials, so she lost. She taught for the Lakeshore Board. This is like a, her second career. She retired in 70 with your father, right? Your father yeah, oh, retired and your mother retired at the same time. Yes, I, uh, yes. And then some years passed, and then she just she wanted to oh, get I back Oh, I think she was... I think she was teaching with the board when my father retired. And, and uh, she, the, the, you know, the the... They asked that you had pieces of paper to teach with <laughs> at one point, and she didn't. So uh, she ended up not being able to teach for the board. Uh, she uh, taught in special needs classes. Yeah. So, yeah. so the the other quote she has here is, uh, "I want to share my knowledge, uh, but I'm also learning a lot from the students," uh, said Machen, a former professional musician. Who's who told them that she was a professional? Was she a professional? Well, I don't know how you define well, man, professional. That's probably yeah. it, right? She played with I've an played orchestra. In front of people. She played in <laughs> she played in Carnegie Hall with the orchestra. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Which so one, I the mean, Montreal Women's. Yes, first women's orchestra to play there. Yeah. First Canadian orchestra, I think, to play there. It was nineteen forty, I think. Yes, uh, and first or something. first uh, the really neat thing, first woman of color play in Carnegie Your mother Hall. was the first woman No, my mother was not the first. It was in, she, one of the women in the orchestra works. So here it says, uh, Machen boards a bus in Dorval at 6.45 yes. a.m. every day to get to the school, uh, where she works until 2.15 p.m. What keeps her coming back is her strong desire to reach the students. It sounds like I'm, I'm reading about you. <laughs> I'd, so yeah, well, you had a tall order to follow uh, between your father and your mother. Yes. Uh, well, I was. I yes. They never. They they were too busy to put that on me. I I would never felt that from them. I think that I'm a failure. That they don't. Uh, that they haven't accepted what I'm trying to teach them. But then I just think, well, I'll get it across tomorrow. Yes. Oh yes. Oh yes, that was my mother. Oh that's, yes, that's unbelievable. Yes, the, yes. at that age. How, how, yeah, at yes. that age. Yeah. So in '91, she would have been uh, 79. Yes, I guess so. Yeah. That's incredible to yes. think uh, that these students aren't getting it, but she she understands where they are in life, and she understands yes. that they're learning, and she understands where she is in age yes. compared to them. Yes, yes, no, no. I, I can mean, name a couple yeah. of teachers that were not like that when I was in high school. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. I mean, she was, uh, yeah, I, I, I very much was, in, I'm sure I was influenced them, but they didn't, they didn't say, now, Pat, this is the way to go. They didn't, they did, led by example, I guess. None of the really led by example. So here, none of the volunteer uh, teachers wanted to tell their age. Machen explained to the students uh, who would view them as grandparents. Um, Quote, 
When they asked my age, I say, I'm 150. <laughs> and they say, you can't be more than 130. <laughs> so that's, so that was, that was very interesting to learn about your mother. And here she is in, uh, in 1963, um, assisting, you said that she was, uh, uh, with the, uh, um, what is this, the Children's Service Center. Oh, well, that was in her other career. Yeah. No, what happened, um, Valwa School, the first grade teacher was Gertrude Hartair, who was my Auntie Gertrude. You know, one of those uh, not real aunties, but yeah. Gertrude Hartair took one look at my mother and decided that they worked well together, and they did, okay? And Gertrude Hartair had a daughter of a little older than I was, and so therefore she decided that I would go to school with her daughter in grade one. And you know, like that was the end of it. I was five. I wasn't supposed to be there, but I was there. And I was in that crazy rhythm band that Gertrude Hartair ran. You saw that picture, the, picture, the famous yes. picture yeah. of the rhythm band. Yeah. Gertrude Hartair, that would have been in the 60s, early, early 60s, realized that there was a huge need for a school for emotionally disturbed kids, which at that time was unheard of. So Hello. she set up a private school, and initially there were two teachers, Gertrude Harter and Mary Machen. <laughs> Mary Machen was supposed to be the music therapist, but when they realized that these children had great dismay and great distress and tended to be a bit violent, my mother would not bring her violin. She went happily, and, uh, but she wouldn't take her violin. And so she became a teacher rather than a music therapist because she was not going to have her violin there. Wow. Uh, you know, uh, so, and that school prospered, I, I think for at least 10 years. At one point, my second teach, I taught there for a year or two. It was an amazing place. And it was an amazing understanding of stu kids that uh, were schizophrenic some, but also depressed. Uh, uh, it was a private school. There was overnight, they had counselors there all the time. You had people, it was an amazing uh, school that be, uh, came to expensive to run. So now um, that we've talked about your parents at great yeah, length, yeah. sort of established how prestigious of a personality uh, and who they were in the community, um, how did that play off on you as, as young uh, Pat Machen in the community um, like when I worked at McDonald's, I was George's son, so I had to watch my step. What was that like for you in Valwa growing up as a kid, knowing that you were the preacher's daughter? Um, my father never demanded that of me, and I never felt it. I never thought of myself. Now I'm much more amused at saying I'm a minister's daughter because it shocks people. Uh, particularly the people I've min met since, you know, like the, <laughs> you know, are you minister's daughter? But but the image of a minister's daughter is, is a funny image. <clears throat> My father only, I, I respected, I would, I was, I went to church, I did, I went to the Sunday school, I came up through the young people's uh, group. Um, Bob Layton was our advisor, you know, Jack Layton's father. But, and uh, I was part of the group. I was not, I was Pat. I don't feel that I, I never felt, there was only once in my life that I got it. And that was one day I went, I had long hair. And I went and got a cut. And I would have been in my teens, I can't remember. And I got home and there was this beautiful little uh, note waiting for me. Uh, saying, uh, obviously from an elderly lady, saying, you need to cut your hair. And I have never been more angry that, that I cut it, because she probably thought I cut it because of the anonymous note. In actual fact, I'd cut it one day before I got the note. And that was the only time I realized I was a community person, I was a minister's daughter, uh, you know, and that she felt as a minister's daughter, for some reason, I shouldn't have long hair. I don't know what it was, but it was somebody 
of a certain age with lovely little flowered note. And if I could have regrown that hair in a day, I would have. <laughs> <laughs> because my father wouldn't have wanted that either. That was not... My father, my mother had incredible freedom for a minister's wife. Incredible. You know, she went every week, at least once, if not twice, downtown to play. Yeah. Uh, getting the train, you know. Yeah. And uh, he never demanded of her that she be the minister's wife. You were also a bit of a high achiever because you won an award or a scholarship, right? That's in the paper. With, uh, the, you sent me the picture of that. I think oh it's yes, Paul yes, Pringle yeah, yeah, who, uh, who yeah, took that yeah. picture. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you won an award for well, something. Well, it was just you made it in the paper. Your, your well, yeah, it was the, the Lakeshore News, and it was yeah. I was first in the class because the one who would have been first in the class went off to Selwyn House. Yeah. So let's see. It says here, uh, <laughs> Principal of Valla Park, awarding of scholarships donated by the uh, Valla Home and School Association for the two grade eight students who maintain the highest academic average. There were probably 20 people in the class. Eh? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> sorry. Two of eight, the highest, <laughs> and the others were real bobos. No, no, they weren't. No, 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 I'm not saying that, but it, we're talking about six streets. We're talking about, a, it was, I remember it. Yeah, and it I says remember highest. It. it doesn't say with honors. It doesn't no. say highest. Yeah. So you, so, uh, you were the uh, winner. Uh, you got sixty bucks. 60, that, at that time, eh? Yes, yeah. Sixty bucks, and yeah. then Anne uh, Kellaway. Yeah. So, growing up in Valwa, what was Valwa like? You had mentioned six streets. What does that mean? It means that we knew each other. Everybody knew each other. Uh, we didn't, I, I now realize that some of the, very few, but some would be going to another school, going to a Catholic school, right? Because it was uh, Protestant and Catholic you did, you at the time. You didn't realize that? You no, realize. at the time I didn't. But the, is it because there wasn't many Catholics No, in no, or? not English Catholics, no. We knew each other at whatever level of school we were in. We bicycled up the, down the six streets sometimes straying across the tracks down to the lakeshore, with, despite the fact that our parents all said, don't cross the tracks. So let's name the six <laughs> streets here. We have the three, which is... Uh, Bawa Prince, Bay. Yeah, Prince Edward, Prince Edward Queen, Queens, and King. Kings. And then we have Donaghany. Donaghany, uh, the one that went across... And is it uh, Mount Pleasant? It would have been Mount Pleasant, uh, yes, yes. Belmont would have and been. Belmont, there. yeah, up above, yeah. There was nothing up above the, the, no. the there was woods up at the, it's where St. Louis is now. Yeah, there's another one up and there where uh, where John Fisher is. That's right. Uh, that and street, that was there. Uh, Summerhill. Summer okay, and that went over, and I think uh, was Broad, Broadview was there. Broadview would have been really. Yeah. Uh, under, yeah. I guess uh, Broadview. And Parkdale, we, I guess, would have been considered Valwa at the time. Yes, oh, as yeah. As well, I think. So what would have been your boundaries when you were a kid? Is it just everywhere in, in yeah, Valois? Anywhere. And, and with my family, we went skiing over in Parkdale in that area. We'd ski over, you know. And in actual fact, I think I told Downhill? you. Downhill? Well. <laughs> <laughs> Cross we country? thought it was downhill. <laughs> yeah, well, because Ann Smith, who grew up on Parkdale, said she would toboggan down yes, that hill. Yes, there was a hill. I know that, for example, my father was had two charges. Eh? At the beginning, he was also at Strathmore United. And we would ski over, he and I, sometimes. What do you mean? On Sundays? Yes. That's how he got there. He didn't have a car. Now, hold on a second. <laughs> <laughs> We'd ski over. There wasn't a bus, I guess? Or no, there, was there wasn't a bus. No one, no one from Valwa could give him a lift? He didn't ask. He, he would ski over. He was country. very much of a, he was he in was, England, I think, quite an athlete. So you'd cross, mm -hmm. so you'd cross country, uh, I guess you were living above the drugstore at the time? Right? Yes, yeah. So you'd cross country from yeah. there, take down, down to the lakeshore? Yeah, and ski over. We skied over, yeah. I don't, uh, you see, I, I really thought there wasn't a 20 when we were skiing over it, but there had to be because it, it came yeah. in quite early, yeah. Yeah, 40, it was there. So you didn't have a car in the, no. in the early days. So, no. So what about going to the movies or in the village? Or we would walk. From Valwa? Yes, my grandmother and I would walk to the Maples for tea. 
it the was maples. A, it this was is, a tea this place. This is in the earlier yes. incarnation of the maples yes. before it turned into yes, a... Yes, uh, it was a German family, and they had a German tea house of some sort. The owners at the time. Yeah. So this yeah. is the... What, around the 50s you're talking about? Oh, yeah. less than, the, oh no, well, 40s. earlier 40s, well, late 40s, but you know, when I was, would be around 10 or so. And uh, no, we always, we'd walk to the theater, but a parent would pick us up, you're right. And maybe there was a bus at that point that we might take, but we walked, we'd walk to the theater, we'd walk to Point Clare Village. What would you have to go into the village for if you were going to go into the village? The theater, the movies, mostly Not that. So let's go to your earliest memories of Vawa. The, the, the park is there, the school is there, you know everybody, you're walking everywhere. Or side bicycle. We, we all were on bicycles. What, what would have been an, an average day, let's say, a summer's day, school's out, summer's day? Hide and seek. We played a lot of hide and seek. We played a lot of, uh, we used to do theater in people's backyards with sheets. <laughs> You know, we did a lot of that too, probably. And parents would watch us and be nice. <laughs> <laughs> Entertainment was simple, I guess, at that time. We played, uh, we played marbles. We played. Uh, uh, I was talking to somebody the other day. The, the jacks, you throw the jacks. Yeah. Out. None of this I was I was too successful at. So I watched a lot of it, and we played pick up sticks. Played Monopoly. We'd play Monopoly by the hour when it came in. It was quite amazing. That was our you know. the first board game that yes. uh, you remember yes. making yes. an impact. Well, on I them. think there were the other ones, but the Monopoly is the one we just. That was a summer thing. We played outside. Mrs. Cochran would do canning, and we would do that. We'd learn that with her if she was there. But we just walked. We went down and swam. Oh yeah, we would also would go swimming in in. The lake. The, the beaches Pui were Louis. still been yes, there. Yes. The beaches were still there. Well, yes, it was sort of a beach. I don't really Well, because in the late 50s is when the St. Lawrence Seaway came in. Oh, yeah. Was and I think well that, brought the, yeah, that brought the water level up okay. quite a bit. Yeah. Which me, so before that, I think there was still a bit of a shoreline. Just a bit of a shoreline, I would say, you know, from here to the door. Yeah, so it was very little. The and one that you would go to in. would be at the foot of Bowa Bay. Bay. Yeah. Okay. In so Bawa when, Bay. when you used to go, did you still see the uh, the post sticking out of the water yes. for the old country yes. club? Yes. Yes. And so, from your memory, did you remember asking questions, or did you know what was there before? We were. Did, did it ever feel like you missed the dance in Valois? No, like, no, what no, was no. Here because no? you know, like when we came to the age of dancing, that's when the churches uh, kicked in first, and then the schools. But the churches kicked in, and we would have. Well, the other thing we used to do is go to Saturday morning movies at the church, and they were the cowboy movies, right? It, were, I can remember that in the church basement. <clears throat> but um, we would do dancing in the churches. We'd have young people's groups in the churches. We'd play badminton in the churches. In you know, the basement. In the basement, yeah. And uh, we would... Uh, the schools were very, we were taught in phys ed, we all knew the rules of badminton and volleyball. Ter I was terrible. I was terrible in any of them, you know, because <laughs> first of all, I don't have focus. Okay, so <laughs> it took a while for me to actually remember what I was doing. You asked me about my academics. I had the tendency to forget that I was in school and do very average. And that a, a teacher would sweetly phone, I can remember the names of the teachers, would phone my mother or parents, and they didn't have to do anything because I knew a better, so the next uh, class I would be good. And then I sort of <laughs> drift off into another world again. School wasn't a, uh, it was a daydreaming place. But we, at school, we yeah. did all of those. We did, we played baseball. We played a lot of baseball in the summer. I used um, the pronoun we sparingly because I was often in the outfield. I would not, you know, like, I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't there. <laughs> You know, I wasn't. They put a, you in the outfield. Well, yeah, because. That's almost more of a metaphor <laughs> than a position for you, maybe. <laughs> Tell me more, more about the shoreline because. The, th the thing was pretty much closed off for two reasons. So kids who were born, let's say, 
at the most 10 years after you, up until kids who were born up until the last 10 years, that lake was just non-existent. No. It was there to look at, but even at that, you don't even look at it too close. Um, and you fortunately <clears throat> were able to experience it. Yes. It was the main reason why Valwa was there to begin with. Well, yeah, we would go down every day. You're perfectly right. That was the other thing we did. And uh, it, I, 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 you know, in retrospect, you don't know whether this is truth or myth, but, but I do remember <clears throat> that John Dunn got um, polio and we all came out of the lake. When polio came, we all got out of the lake. So this would have been, would you say this is late 40s? Yes, I would say. So it's the early onset. Yes, yes. Earliest onset of polio. Yes. Do you remember the polio wave? Like yes. How you learned about it? Do you, What was that like? Was everyone talking about it? Everyone was terrified? Well, we saw the effect on John. John was very ill. He never, he, he got over it. He didn't have the iron lung or anything like that. But uh, we never went in the lake again. He was a kid. He was a kid. He was our age. And uh, I don't know whether our parents associated the two. Whether they, or whether somebody said, don't go in the lake. And I don't know whether that's where he got it. And I also remember, because my parents sent me to summer camp because they thought it would be good for me. Um, Why'd you roll your eyes at that? Eh? Why'd you roll your eyes at that? Because I hated it. I hated <laughs> it. <laughs> I wanted to be home with my friends, but they thought it, I, as an only child, it would be, it was a, but they, I never told them I hated it. In fact, I, I because it was a, a summer camp and I would be socialized, okay, or whatever. And one of the girls in the camp, not from the camp water, but got polio. And yeah. and that was something we all, it was a dread until the vaccin vaccination came in, eh? And, and so how many years between um, kids starting to get polio and then vaccines or stuff was it mid, i think it was mid 50s or something yes it eh? took a while yeah. yes yeah there were a lot of a uh, lot of people suffered and a lot of people just came back it's a virus in your body evidently and people came and much older people was there a second had a recurring wave? It, they had, it recurred within the person so that you got the uh, vaccination as a student in school yes yeah, it, was sure a, that was it. A, it was a scraping or something. It uh, was, yes, it wasn't nice. No, the scraping, well, the other thing we, they. It was that tuberculosis. Yeah, they were very fearful. Suddenly that became very important. And, and that was a, the test for that. Woo. It the was, TB, you know, uh, yeah, yeah, it was scrapes on the my back. Your still has, my dad still has. Uh, <coughs> yeah. Scars. And we have our smallpox mark. Yeah. Okay, all of us, I think. Uh, we still. were the meningitis generation. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> had, yeah. I think we had it at Rennie. I think okay. uh, we got uh, a vaccine at Rennie. Yeah, I, I, I think so. But so anyway, so the um, so the students would have all gotten it in the, in the schools. Oh yes. And then they had clinics set up. I yeah. think in various yeah. locations in the city. Yeah. For that, wow. I went to Valwa Elementary, not Valwa Park Elementary. I have to take the park out. Valwa 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 School. We called it. We went to the school up the street. Mother walked me up every day. I was always late because we patted every dog on the way. <laughs> you like that one, eh? <laughs> it was, you know, I mean, including one of the most beautiful collies, 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 stunning animal that would only let us pat him. And if anybody else came up to pat him, he'd bite them. So we had to be very careful because, you know, we'd be patting away and they'd come up and we'd say, no, 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 because he would bite. Our community, the, we were friends with all the people in the school to a certain extent. We all knew each other. We all played together and we all learned together. And we all, we knew the hierarchy probably in the school. I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, and the teachers knew us very well. Often, Babs was saying, one of them often went for supper at her parents' place, just f not to discuss Babs or anything, but just as a social thing. And, uh, but it was a school, it was those wooden desks, uh, it was a ritual. Um, the teachers, I wanted to say one thing, I think the teachers were probably fairly compassionate. They knew us, they knew our families. And uh, they probably, you know, like they knew, they knew our stories, you know. The school, um, do you remember when you started the school there, did it, 
Did it have an old air to it at that point? Probably. It had an old, uh, when I was thinking about it the other day, I was saying it had a certain smell, <laughs> scent, scent. Not smell is not a good word. Scent to the it. Asbestos thing? No, it could have been <laughs> all the maps. Or you probably were used all to the it. Maps, yeah. All the maps. All the maps. When we made it of flour and water or asbestos, those maps. So those maps were the parents' nightmare. Parents' nightmare. What because, maps? Yeah, we had that was how was we learned about geography. Yeah, that was our projects. We did a lot of contour maps, from what I can remember. Okay, there was at least one every year. And volcanoes, and we did science oh, too. Yeah, 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 yeah. We did all of that kind of thing with asbestos clay, and with salt and water and flour. I think that was the other thing we used. But <laughs> because I was thinking, um, uh, somebody was talking about. Uh, I heard uh, as I was coming out, you know, like, how did you do the projects? Well, we had the book of knowledge. All of us and the salesman came round. We all had the book of knowledge. Encyclopedia. Yeah. <laughs> huge set of them so we learned through that and and they were wonderful to read through actually I must admit I mean it was a because I was a dreamer I I, I spent a lot of time reading the book of knowledge so what did that do did that help solidify who you were as as VAWA kids we were always VAWA kids I think we were always VAWA kids I mean we we, we were in Cedar Park we didn't mix to that extent in actual fact we did mix with the Cedar Park kids when they all went. We all went into Montreal West. Mm. We got to know them, and we would be, again, I use the word loosely, in sports with them because I always liked to be around the sports. I just, I did a lot of serving of orange halves. <laughs> <laughs> and if everything was really bad, then they put me in the middle of the basketball court and say, don't let anybody pass you, okay? That was... <laughs> strategy but but apart from that but um so you had there was a song so yeah we, we and i have to get the words for you again we don't care about cedar park yeah we're vowa from vowa i mean we sang that all the way over poor mr stockwell because it was a terrible bit of news for us you know there we were in grade seven the, you're about yeah. to start in a brand new school a brand new school brand new we had modern been, school that that's was right sold at. that's right and yeah walking distance from the house that's right and and new and and with a gym and with you know like we'd had as I say the gyms that we and the baseball in the park and so on like that we'd had all of that out in the churches mm -hmm. you know and uh, yeah I mean we, we we yeah so we ended up in Cedar Park which was foreign to, I I can remember the classroom in Cedar Park I can remember the the cupboard the the coat cupboard uh, but it was a it was a you know it was one year. And uh, then we came back to Vowell, and we became grade the eight. grade eight, we, uh, but in the old in the school. In the old school? Yes. So you never made it to the bloody Never new made school. it to the new school. <laughs> uh, you come back, and you're right back where you that's had right. grade one. That's right. How did they divide up? Cause, so grade one to grade six, there was only four classes. Was it was one and two together, and two and three together? and. No, I, I feel, no, we were all in our own classrooms. What are you saying? There's only four classrooms? Can you find a picture of uh, inside for me? When you were going to uh, VAWA for uh, grade eight, it was just the grade eight. Eight, yes, there. yes. So what was that like to have a whole school with That was fun. That was, yeah, we you owned the school. don't have any kids anymore. Now it's no, just the, it was the ours. Mature, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and we did a lot of activities, I think. You know, we were, yeah. Oh yeah. So uh, there's two teachers um, that come that are more prominent than others, um, only in conversations. One is Miss Moore. Yes. So was Miss Moore uh, in the older school and then was transferred over, or is she just someone who people remember because of well, her stature? They, uh, because of her stature, I think she replaced Mrs. Harter. She was grade one. She yeah. was a young for the young ones. She came out of the army. She was military. I can remember that because she was military. And yes, her stature, I think she was very, very strict, but very nice. I don't think she was the frightening thing, but she was frightening because she was so tall, right? Find the other one there. Miss yeah. Spearman? So, Miss Spearman, your... you remember Miss Spearman? Yes, oh yeah. She was very, very bright. She became the principal, I think, at one she point. She was the principal of Bawa Elementary for a short while. Yes, yes. Perhaps so after Mr. Para. She had. Um, her 25th anniversary of teaching was uh, in 
55. So she started around 1930. So she also would have been a, one of the more older school teachers Oh, yes, teachers she was a senior time. teacher. She was a senior so teacher. So she was like the Michalachki for my era. She was and she wasn't. I mean, she was very, uh, uh, she was very much, a, I think she was probably quite an academic. I mean, you know, I never went, yeah. Yeah. She was something, though, yeah. Vowa was, the, and it was more than stri six streets, but for me it was six streets till I left. Do you think most kids would have the same? Yes, I think so. That Vawa was the beginning and the ends of the earth. Yes, and many of them stayed there. Many of them, you know. Not because it's a small town, but because it was everything you needed. Yeah, yeah. There is a lot more that we can get into, and we did get into a lot more. Uh, unfortunately, not in this sit down, but in various phone calls. And see, what happens is, you know, you think of a, something to, to talk about in an endangered story, in a video, and you find people who were around at the time. Um, so what I'll do is I'll link um, a couple of videos that Miss Machen was in uh, down below in the description. So if, if this wasn't enough Machen for you, there's more Machen down below in the description. So before you click there, before you click away, and before you click the X, uh, please subscribe uh, to the channel. I'm gonna be posting as much as I can on this channel now. And uh, press the like button because it does tell YouTube that you wanna see more of these types of videos and it helps my algorithms a lot too. Um, so uh, apart from that, have a great evening. Thank you for watching. Thank you for making it to this point here. And uh, we'll see you in the next one. If you have any memories of Miss Machen, please share them down below, either on the Facebook page, uh, Endangered Stories, or right here in the comments. Again, thank you for spending your evening with us, and we hope to see you next time. Ciao.